G'day everybody and welcome back to my fourth episode of my CRTO journey. So now I've been able to make regular progress, um, getting these videos out a bit more frequently. I have finished all the lab work and coursework now, so I'm pretty happy with that. There are a few things that I want to revisit, either topics that I don't fully understand and would revisit, or some labs that just didn't quite work, whether or not this is a problem with a lab or with something that I was doing. I'm not too sure, but I'm going to wipe the environment clean and start again and see how we go. Now I'll do a full course review later, but overall I found this uh, course very enjoyable. Specifically some topics that were really deep in Active Directory really got my brain ticking. Um, so things like constrained and unconstrained delegation, as well as um, forest and domain trust was really, really interesting as well. Um, so I quite liked some of these because they were teaching things that um, I think only a real expert in uh, Active Directory administration would really know. So these are great to learn from an offensive perspective. That being said, I do find every now and then a little bit more of an explanation on some of these Active Directory topics would be helpful. Though I find generally there is a good balance between uh, course wordiness uh, describing concepts um, and the balance between trying to ex explain concepts and keep things also um, quite lean and manageable. So there is a nice balance, but sometimes I do feel like uh, a couple of, a little bit more of an explanation on some of these concepts would be helpful. While I acknowledge no course is perfect and I have done a few courses by this point, um, there are a few little niggly boy bits that annoy me, which I think could uh, be uh, fixed up. So firstly, some of the exercises require a fair bit of prerequisite steps to be able to follow along with. Um, and sometimes it's a bit of guesswork to try and find out where to follow along with. So a bit of an explanation or a bit of a quick um, setup for some of these exercises re that require a few beacons on different machines could be really helpful just to minimize the amount of time setting things up uh, and working out how to set it up. Um, I found though this process in itself was actually pretty good to try and iron in some concepts and act a little bit more autonomously. As I mentioned previously, this course does it is very much like a follow along handhold. So these occasions where you are a bit more autonomous were still good. Um, I'd just like those sections to be their own dedicated sections rather than trying to follow along with an exercise and then spending half an hour try just trying to get it into the required state. Um, so obviously this eats into your lab time a bit, um, but not too much. On the topic of lab time, I have spent about 35 hours to do the entire course, and this is after restarting uh, several times. Uh, I think I restarted this course three times. So yeah, after doing the course, the first half of the course maybe three times and then following through to the end of it, I used about 35 hours. I do plan on using another five or so hours um, when I purchased the course, I actually purchased 60 because that was prior to um, the bundles that they came with. Um, so I probably won't use all 60, but I'll, you know, use as many as I need. And it's nice to know that I'm not constrained by that. I run out of time if I do and by then I should be fine. So when it comes to exams, what my strategy is, is to basically learn as much as I can now in small little manageable time chunks to minimize the amount of time in the exam. I really don't want to spend 48 hours plus doing an exam. So the least amount of time to spend, obviously the better for me. So I'm just going to be brushing up on things um, to really understand these concepts well. Um, I've read in the exam brief that this is an assumed breach um, and that you need to uh, mimic a APT or a threat actor um, and you do that through the whole malleable C2. Um, you get the profile once you book the exam so that it does look like you can do a little bit of pre-exam prep in that space as well. So I'm fo focusing a lot on that. 
I uh, definitely want to focus a lot on um, anti antivirus evasion as well because this seems to be a common difficulty people have had with the exam. Um, so a bit of focus there. From what I gather, most people have problems on their first and sixth flag. Uh, so while I'm fairly confident I know what the issue is with the first, I have no idea with the six. So that's going to be interesting. Um, but yeah, I see most people kind of go in rapid fire between two to five, flag two to five. So I'm hoping that uh, that's the bulk of the coursework there and maybe the first and six are these kind of fringe topics. Um, so we'll see how we go. So all in all, after I finally had the time to sit down and work on this course, I really have enjoyed it and have definitely learnt a lot. Um, once again, I've got an affiliate link in the description. So if you want to check out this course for yourself, uh, buying the course through that link will just uh, help support the channel. And um, yeah, it really goes a long way in supporting the channel and helping me uh, upload and everything like that. Anyway, like and subscribe and all that good stuff. I'll release another video as to how I've been revising all these concepts and how I've been preparing for the exam. Then that will probably be it until my post-exam video. So yeah, wish me luck and I'll catch you in the next one.